Hello all uh, and welcome to Closure Diary. Uh, my name is Karthikeya. I am a software architect for a long time. I think more than 10 years in IT industry as software architect, 17 years totally in IT industry. So like some things have pushed me to, uh, what to say, evaluate Closure as my next career choice or programming language or something. So I just want to say why that I got pushed in that direction. So let me just share you a slide deck. Okay, so uh, this is it. And uh, um, to, yeah. okay. so I just want to say like why I got pushed to closure and then uh, why I'm starting this channel and all those stuff, right? So that's it, right? So one thing what I'm just dealing with is with lots of code, like one of my projects is dealing with, sorry, one of the projects which I dealt with had point to 0 0.2 million lines of code, okay, so that's the thing, and other project had 0 0.1 million lines of code, and my misfortune that uh, that a project with 0 0.2 million lines of code never had a single test, yes, it never had a single test, and people were kind of, I don't know, you, you should know to that's those people, right? So, and, and another project that had like 0.1 million lines of code did have tests, but it wasn't fully covered and all those stuff. So, uh, there were a lot of, uh, what to say, uh, problems and even moving a ticket was very, very tough and all those things. So, I was put into that kind of environment. And in fact, that company had uh, some kind of branding, like uh, it was a great place to work, but definitely not a great place to code. So yeah, uh, like uh, even very seasoned established uh, MNCs don't know how to do that. And, uh, and I just want to bring an awareness about like functional programming and all those stuff. So that like they too have an idea and all those things and just hiring an architect and just telling to miraculously fix it. I think they, they need some knowledge, okay? And it's not only for them, this blog is even for individuals like who wants to improve their code and all those stuff. So I have been involved in uh, situations where there is a lot of code and a lot of systems talking with each other like microservices and all those things where Kafka and uh, or just using REST API and all those stuff and a lot of background jobs running and all those things and a lot of code and uh, so it becomes very frustrating to maintain and all those things so that's the thing and I, I have seen the limits of OOP right so like uh, it is only to some stage OOP holds, whether you write tests or not write tests. Okay, yeah, this is my personal opinion. Of course, like there are OOP programmers that say like, okay, like OOP is the next step of functional program, step from functional program. That is closure and all are functional programming languages. Uh, you will know what, what is the meaning of functional programming and all those things. If you stick to this blog, blog and all those stuff. So. But the thing is, like, they say OOP is the next stage, but the thing is, I don't think so. Like, I've seen the limits of OOP, and uh, and uh, if you look at some functional programming languages like Lisp, they are holding out, and uh, and uh, you can write great projects with them and very, very big projects with them, and that's it, right? Uh, and great people recommend, uh, I don't know whether people's is right, okay, great people recommend some kind of functional programming language like uh, uh like okay like, let me just break from here and let me just go to my so this is my blog closurediary.gitlab.io so yeah i've also written like why closure right so um uh, this guy name is richard stallman okay so this is he's one of the smartest Ha hacker ever right okay so he also founded the free software foundation you need to go and check it if you don't know what free software foundation is and all those stuff right so i i don't think we are programmer okay i don't think we uh i really don't know whether we'll be programmers if this guy never existed okay so he made software cheap he made uh, what to say computing cheap and all those things up so, Okay, the people like Steve Jobs, Bill Gates and all, they sp spend a lot of money to get limelight. But I don't think this guy spent a lot of money to gain recognition, right? So, so yeah, like uh, you should know about his greatness. Okay, so this guy recommends Lisp. Lisp is nothing but, okay, a closure is a dialect of Lisp. Okay? 
so just like okay like i think a lot of alphabets today uh, follow roman alphabets and uh, so all are kind of uh, roman language or something like that at least in europe so similarly a uh, lot of sorry there are some class of programming language like clojure haskell i think scheme also yeah so they are all a dialect of a language for this and it seems to be a very excellent language for programming okay and a lot of great people recommend it okay so that's the thing and this guy is called uncle bob like okay so his, his name is robert martin okay so you can check my blog like this is there in my blog and you can also i recommend highly to watch this video right and i also highly recommend to read this book clean book okay so in oops yeah we are just trying to make the code cleaner cleaner and better and more understandable but we just reach limits and i have seen that and that is the very same statement even rich hickey says okay rich hickey uh let me show you who's rich hickey uh he is the inventor of closure right so yeah so this guy uh rich hickey okay this photo is very very small okay my this is okay let me put a bigger photo of him yeah, this one is okay. yeah. so this guy is rich shiki and uh, yeah anyway it's not clear uh he is the inventor of closure and surprisingly he also faced the same problem which we are facing that is like uh many uh software architects are facing while we are while we need to code very very large systems and all those stuff so yeah so look i'm not saying like oop is bad and you shouldn't learn it and all those stuff but i'm just saying is like oop is good till one stage and i'm i'm only exploring whether closure is good okay so that's the thing that's why i'm just calling this as closure diary not like a definitive closure or something like that where i say like yes closure is everything and all those things no i myself am exploring i am a ruby on rails programmer okay and uh, that's the thing till yesterday i was thinking ruby or ruby is ultimate but the thing is yeah i just want to explore so that's why this uh, uh that's why i'm just putting a diary as a blog and blog and all those stuff okay so that's the thing right uh so yeah i'll be jumping now in and out and uh, that's my kind of style okay and yeah like i'm a web developer yeah as i said like if you guys know what ruby on rails is it's a web development framework it's a it's a very very excellent web development framework and uh yeah so uh, you should try it out okay so that's the thing and uh try it out means okay like i i would recommend like uh, okay sorry i'm sorry about that uh you should take a decision whether or not to try it out because it takes a lot of time to learn ruby on rails okay so that's the thing so just uh, think about it and just go and see it like if you're in some other programming language and if you're feeling web development is tough or something like that try out ruby on rails and see maybe it'll increase your speed like say 10x or something yeah i'm not kidding i mean uh, that's real okay so that's it uh but the thing is like uh, one problem i just have with web development is there are different languages i need to master look uh, for the back end it's all ruby and it's super good okay but for the front end like uh, i need to learn this thing called javascript and uh, the philosophy of javascript is totally different from the philosophy of ruby okay so uh, so it becomes very difficult for us to have this two things in mind and develop projects okay so and i don't want to say things about javascript because i want to keep negative stuff out of this channel as much as possible so just a second clojure on the other hand lets you develop web apps with just one language okay that is clojure on the back end and there is a clojure script on front end so no need to have like this two kind of models in your mind okay look now i'm j developing javascript so i should code like this now i'm coding ruby i should uh, code like that like all i just need to think about is closure while i'm developing web apps okay so that's the thing right and another thing is like i just uh i just love this data science and machine learning and all those things like uh, i always wanted to do something in artificial intelligence but i didn't get the right opportunity but of course i have done something but i didn't get the enough and right opportunity 
and I just want to explore closure with it. And uh, there is a project called Cycloge, and uh, 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 okay, uh, there is a project called Cycloge. I think I must change from DuckDuckGo. I think uh, Bing is forcing DuckDuckGo to track us. So that's it. So they have provided some libraries for scientific computing and all those stuff. So I just want to explore this and see how well it goes and all those stuff. Okay, so uh, that's the thing, right? Um, okay, yeah. And now one, what I just want to emphasize is clean code. Look, uh, uh, look, you can develop software initially fast with very unclean code, but when time goes, it starts to hit you and when software is running for a long time and the business needs uh, require you to change software and software is a very dynamic system that is and uh, uh, when the code is not clean you're screwed okay so that's the thing actually the initial person who develops the code he won't be screwed he'll be sitting at the top level and he will just say look i've just developed it from scratch why can't you maintain it but as architects like us like who needs to bear the brunt and even if you say like look it is you who screwed and it's because of you like we are not have we, we are unable to develop and uh, that's the thing and uh, no like they would agree okay so uh they will just say like okay like we architects don't have that uh talent and blah 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 and all those stuff right okay like it's someone like spreading taunts on the road and just telling you to drive and when the car tire gets punctured, they say like, look, you don't know how to drive. And <laughs> so, uh, the, yeah, the world is as stupid as that. But the thing is like, yeah, like, uh, yeah, of course, I don't have the power to change the world, but at least I have the power to give my knowledge. Okay, so that's the thing, right? So this is what the channel is going to cover. Like, uh, definitely we are going to cover, cover clean code. Okay, so this one, right? And definitely we are going to cover web development, right? And I just want to cover like, okay, like uh, machine learning, right? And uh, that thing. And I'll also be exploring about like big data and data engineering with closure because like, uh, I think Kafka has very good Java uh, bindings and other things. But yeah, even without Kafka, you should be able to uh, do this big data systems and uh, and all those stuff. So possibly even like uh, developing, uh, okay, what to say like, uh, uh spark and all those stuff possibly i can even try it on this channel I, i'm not sure but yeah i just want to try out big data and data engineering and I, definitely i just want to try out distributed systems and i want to combine machine learning and with distributed systems and see whether i can build a neural network that can span many computers and uh, and they should be asynchronous okay so i don't know whether even that's possible or whether i'm talking some something sensible but yeah, I just want to do like that. So look, if you can distribute uh, a neural network and if you can distribute data and if you can make learning uh, distributed, uh, I think it's going to be a huge boon for many people. Like even people who are not having powerful computers can do uh, something great, okay, by combining with their friends' computers and all those stuff, right? So that's it. So yeah, uh, the reason why to start it as a channel and rather than just keep as a blog, look, one thing is reach. I want to reach a lot of people, okay, spread the message. And number two is like, yeah, like I just feel like uh, there isn't much videos about Lojo, like there are videos about uh, JavaScript and, and uh, what to say, or uh, Python and all those stuff, okay, so and... Uh, uh, we need, uh, look, a language is, if a language is good, we need a lot of people talking about it. So I just thought, okay, why can't I talk about it? So that's the thing, right? So yeah, keep watching, subscribe, like, and whatever you want. Uh, so, so that like, uh, you get, you get updates from the channel. So that's, that's the thing, like, and, uh, and of course, yeah, follow my blog, like it's, uh, that's my blog, right? Yeah. Uh, it's closurediary.gitlab.io, right? So that's it. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, so let's see you in next video.